on, everyone? Welcome back to this week's episode of Outside the Arena. I'm Griffin Senek, joined alongside my co-host, Devin Bernstein. And Devin, since we last recorded, the Phils, they were dancing. They're still dancing. The 2-0 and since we last left them, playing probably the best baseball out of any team, it feels like, in October. But before we talk about the Phils, just make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, we're inching closer to 100 subs. We'd love to hit that mark by the end of the year. So uh, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. We'd greatly appreciate it. Um, hopefully lots of big stuff. Hopefully we'll start getting some interviews kind of going on the channel too. I know we kind of both want to get that going. So um, stay tuned. But uh, we're going to go right into it. And like I said, the Phillies, we got to start with your team, Dev. They're just hitting the crap out of the baseball. I mean, up 2-0 in the series. Wheeler and Nola pitching better than you could ever ask for. Uh, Schwarber's hitting bombs left and right. He's already got three in the NLCS. Harper's, you know, ripping a bomb on his birthday. I mean, this team, even as a Mets fan, just so fun to watch, playing with so much chemistry. Kind of your thoughts on on a series that feels like, you know, I don't want to say it's over, but I, I'm pretty sure this series is over at this point. Yeah, I mean, it just, like, game one, we did see a lot of fight back from the Diamondbacks, and they actually had their chances. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, there's a world where they kind of win game one and this is a completely different series. But from what we saw in game two, and you don't want to take too much out of one game that sort of just kind of got away from them. And then in the playoffs, once you give up on a game, you you don't really care how many runs are scored. You're just trying to use as few pitchers and as few arms as possible. Um, so in one sense, it's like, very possible that they just come back, you know, with the three games at home and win two of them, you know, something like that. But then you look at the pitching matchups, especially game three, where you've got Ranger Suarez, who's get, who's been a reliable four inning, you know, twice or once and a half through the lineup type guy, even against the Braves, um, you know, a lefty against Carroll. Um, Marte is better from the right side, but, you know, still, you know, not the worst type matchup. Um, and I don't even know who they're starting for game. I think it's the guy, like it's, it looks like fat to me, but it's <laughs> yeah. Spot. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Um, so I think he's starting, he's not very good to be quite honest. Um, <laughs> so it's just, the offense is really going to have to get going and kind of carry them. Yep. And I don't super see that happening. And this Phillies team, I mean, ev pretty much everyone in the lineup right now is doing really well. Like, Bohm and Schwarber had been the quiet ones, and now they're kind of getting involved, and, like, Real Muto's back, and then Turner and Harper is just so lethal, that 2-3. You don't want to face either of these guys. And then, obviously, Castellanos at the 7 spot's unreal um, for a 7-hitter. And Marsh is a good 8-hitter. It's, like, 1-8 through eight through this lineup. You don't really have any easy outs. Um, not a lot of guys that are worse against one side or anything like that. Like both of these guys or all of these guys, it feels like are pretty good, you know, no matter who they're facing. Um, so, you know, again, you don't want to call a series over at 2-0, but this is about as close as it could feel to over um, right now. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think you look at this series compared to the other, you know, 2 series, which we'll touch on in a little bit. And this one is definitely like, the other one, I think you can see much more of a path for that to, you know, Astros to get back into it. This one, I don't know. I mean, the Diamondbacks, 84 win team in the regular season, first of all. And, you know, not that the Phillies won 100 games, but the Phillies went to the World Series last year, won 90 games. The D backs, you know, a young team, 84 wins. Like they're already, they've already superseded expectations this season. And like in most years, they're probably not even in the playoffs with 84 wins. So, um, you know, this is a team that, um, you know, there's a lot of young talent. Corbin Carroll obviously leading the way. Um, and, you know, the good starting pitching of Merrill Kelly and Zach Allen. But I think we've kind of just seen them kind of meet their uh, kind of meet their match. And just like it's just, you know, they had the they got this far, but it's just not I don't think they're good enough to keep going. Who knows? I mean, things could change. I, I think the only way they win this series is if they sweep at home, because, um, you know, if they win two, then. They got to win two games back to back at the bank. Like, I just don't see that happening. Um, the bank is just such an environment. And you hear Merrill Kelly talking before the game being like, oh, you know, I don't I don't think he was even trying to be disrespectful. I think he was just trying to be like talking about how that Venezuela WBC game was just like so crazy. 
Um, but it's like just not the stuff you want to be saying. Um, but yeah, I mean, this Phillies team, it, it's like the it's like part two of last October, pretty much. Like it feels like everyone's hitting the ball, uh, homers left and right, the crowd going crazy, pitching, you know, their aces are pitching well. Like it's kind of just rinse and repeat what we saw last year in the playoffs. And, you know, this is a, a team that uh they're really freaking good. And especially come playoff time, they play their best baseball and we're seeing that now. So yeah, um, I'd be shocked if if Arizona somehow came back to win the series. I think this series is over. I think the Phillies are back to back National League champions, which is crazy to say. Um, but yeah, that that, that would be a, real. Yeah, it, it really I mean Philly sports right now, man. You got the Eagles in the Super Bowl last year, the, the Phillies about to be back to back in the, the World Series, the Sixers are always in the playoffs every year. Um, you know, I don't think I don't know much about the hockey, but I don't think the Flyers, Flyers are in a good spot. Flyers yeah. But but I don't think the Flyers are even like like I think that's probably the fourth team of Philadelphia. Yeah, Maybe I'm wrong. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's like no one's caring about that. But yeah, what a time to be alive for uh for Mr. Devin over here, my co-host. And uh, yeah, I, you got anything else to say or you want to move on to the other series? No, I'm ready to move on. All right, so moving along, another 2-0 series, Astros-Rangers. This one's been a little bit closer. Uh, Rangers won the first game 2-0, second game 5-4. to um, But tonight's a huge game. It's, it's uh, you know, when – or yeah, it's tonight, right? Oh, no. It's tonight, oh, yeah, yeah, today, 7-0-3. I'm looking at the schedule and I'm getting thrown off. Um Max Scherzer versus Christian Javier on the mound. When you're seeing this, that game will be over. So kind of apologies. Obviously, the series is 3-0. It's probably going to be a little different than uh, how we're going to talk about it. But, um, I mean, this is the game for the Astros. If, if they go down 3-0, the series is over, obviously. Um, but 2-1, like with this Astros team, if they just need the bats to get going. I think that's been the key. Kyle Tucker really has struggled. I don't know. What have your thoughts been? The Rangers, though, on the flip side, like give them credit. Like this team is just – I mean, this is what they did in the first half of the regular season. They just beat up on teams, swung the bats extremely well. So, uh, you know, it seems like they kind of found their their groove once again, despite the the late, uh, you know, late season collapse almost. Yeah, I mean, it often seems like when teams exceed expectations, it's because they were really good for a part of the year. And, you know, for whatever reason, had some stretch of the year where they weren't as good, but then you know, in the playoffs, that good part really comes out. And that's what we've seen with this Rangers team. Um, I think that's the simplest way to describe it. Like you said, they were just killing teams with their power and starting pitching and a few guys in the bullpen at the start of the year. And it was really working. And then everything fell apart and they kind of got it all back together. And it starts with the starting pitching. Um, That's probably been the biggest thing. But it's really been everything. This, this lineup is just so good. And the Astros lineup is equally scary, but that's such a compliment to the Rangers offense. Um, And, you know, we're not going to really preview a world series because we just don't know what it's going to be yet. But yeah. if it is a Rangers Phillies world series, it's like, this is an offense that can compete with the Phillies offense. I mean, that, yeah. that whoever we see come out figures to be a great series, but I would be really excited for a Rangers Phillies series. Um, Obviously, uh, with my Phillies making it. Either way, I'd be happy. But, um, it's just been really impressive. But this is this is the game, like you said. I do think the Astros win tonight. I do think they make it a series. I don't think they're going to be, you know, it's going to get in their heads that they're down 2-0 after losing both home games like it would to, you know, some other teams. Like, they're not – it's not like that. I'm sure they're panicking and in, in the sense that they're mad they're not winning, but they're not – they're not panicking in the sense of like, we don't know what to do. We haven't been here. I mean, they have been to so many ALCSs. Like it doesn't even yeah. matter. Like at this point, necessarily. <laughs> they like, care. <laughs> they, not that they don't care, but you no, just that, have, it's like, it's like, it's you're point, mutual. It's like, I mean, yeah. like yeah. It, yeah, it got to a point with that, like with LeBron where it's like, he's in the finals every year. Like who cares? Like it's, there's no nurse for him, but um, it's yeah. I mean, they're they're really good. I wouldn't be surprised to see them come back. And like, the longer a se- series goes, the more you're going to test the pitching. Like you said, you don't really trust Max Scherzer. I'm going to take your opinion on that as a Mets fan. Like, obviously his numbers are good and the pedigree is amazing. But you know, coming off an injury, we saw it with Strider last year where he got rocked, and now you've got a potentially, you know, not washed, but in that in that 
later stage, not prime of his career coming off an injury. That's pretty dangerous. And then Javier, it's like he pitched well. He's pitched well, obviously, in the playoffs before, like we've talked about, but didn't have a great season this year. And this Rangers lineup is really hot. So could see that going kind of either way. But this is like they're coming off of a rest day, both teams. This is this is this is a huge game and it sucks that we don't, you know, obviously everyone watching us will be will know what happened, but this is an exciting game I'm looking forward to. And I hope we get a good rest of the series here. Yeah, I hope we get, you know, it feels like in the playoffs we haven't really had like a great series to be honest yet. I guess the Braves Phillies would probably be the best one. Um so yeah, I, I hope we do. I think I agree with you. I think the Astros will win tonight. Obviously, um, you know. It's a little weird talking about this since, you know, it will have already happened. But for me, at least, like you said, like Scherzer, like, look, obviously this guy is a Hall of Famer. He's had an incredible career. Obviously it didn't end well with the Mets. But looking at, like, the actual evidence, like the guy gave up – let me pull up the stats. The home runs he gave up, though, this year, way up. Um, here we go. Let's see. He gave up 28 home runs this year in – 152 innings for context he gave up 13 last year and 145 innings so almost double in the same amount of innings that's not good and uh you know mainly part of the problem was he just hung his breaking ball he hung his slider consistently just could not figure it out um you know he's coming off an injury he hasn't pitched in a month the second to last start he made was against the astros that start where he gave up seven earned runs i think that's concerning i think this is a huge game in the series because if Scherzer does not have it and it's hanging his pitches and gives the Astros lineup a chance to kind of get going, then we've got a series on our hands. <laughs> if Max Scherzer returns to the Max Scherzer of, you know, the Washington playoff days, this series is over. So it's really, you know, it's so interesting. It's in his hands completely. Who knows what we're going to get? I honestly don't know how far we'll see him go. Who knows the length of, uh, you know, is it going to be four innings? Is it going to be five innings? I'm sure they're going to try to push him, but their bullpen is on some rest. Um, but I don't know. I think it's gonna be super interesting. And I think it's the perfect pitcher for the Astros to need to get going again, seeing how they perform in that last game, but also coming off the injury, you know, the home run ball is up this year for Scherzer. Like that is kind of what this Astros team needs. It'd be interesting to see how it goes today. Um, and yeah, if they do make it a series and the bats get going, like we've talked, like you talked about Dev, like the pedigrees there, they've done this every year. Like, who's to doubt them, you know, but at the same time, this Rangers team is, you know, they are ripping the, the crap out of the ball. So um, for them, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's just the pitching for the Rangers. Like if, is the pitching going to hold up and, you know, it's probably going to hold up and then the Phillies will come to town and there it goes. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm super excited to see what happens tonight. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all I got on, uh, on that. Obviously, um, you know, if the series is still going on next week, We'll touch on it. Um, any final thoughts, though, on uh, on the series? Just one thing. I mean, yeah, you don't want to be hanging hanging any break, breaking balls against this Astros lineup. Let me tell you that. Not um, not your Don Alvarez, especially. No. Oh, my God. That you don't guy really is want to freak. do anything for him right now. <laughs> you probably just <laughs> walk him. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, probably the smartest course of action, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, next week uh, – Maybe one of these series will still be going. I'm not uh, – one would gain like six or seven. Let's see. I think, I think uh, my guess is it will be over. Game uh, seven would be on Tuesday. Yeah, so this series – we'll have our World Series matchup. World Series starts on Friday, October 27th. So next week, uh, make sure to tune in. We'll give our – you know, we'll we'll recap the, the remainder of these two series and then give our World Series predictions. Pretty exciting. Um, I think your Phillies are going to be in it, Dev. I'd be very shocked if they're not. So – um yeah all right we'll move along now to the nfl uh week six just finished up uh this is take two now so uh you know week seven it feels like you know we're starting to get kind of halfway through the season halfway through the fantasy season um which is scary but also exciting um real quick week six i mean we got to talk about the outside the arena bowl jets eagles i predicted that shit right i'm, I'm gonna be honest i mean I'm a prophet. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, very, very defensive game, 20 to 14 Jets. Um, Jalen Hurts, probably one of the worst games he's had as an Eagle. Um, three interceptions. Um, interceptions definitely have been a, a bit of a problem for him. Garrett or Zach Wilson, 
Um, kind of played just – I mean, he did solid. He didn't turn over the ball, 186 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Um, first loss of the season for the Eagles. Uh, I mean, your thoughts on the game. Obviously, um, you know, Jalen Hurts, that late interception, pretty costly. Yeah, I mean, it's weird because Hurts played so badly at the end of the game that it is one of his worst games. But he did play well for the first, like, three quarters or so and the first interception i wouldn't say was his fault really at all so yeah. that was the like, one where they uh, like stripped it out yeah yeah it was like the screen yeah so and then quinn and william yeah so that's kind of just a freak point not not upset about that the other two interceptions a little concerning like the the last one i mean so i was talking about this with my friends if if the if the guy who intercepted it wasn't there the other guy would have intercepted. There were two guys <laughs> that would have intercepted. But I don't know what he was thinking. But, you know, I mean, this team was going to lose at some point, obviously. They'd been kind of skating that close line. And even the team that hadn't been skating the close line also lost at some point this week. So, you know, you're never going to go 17-0. It's basically impossible to do that. That that wasn't the expectation. But I do think this team is going to, like, learn and come out kind of pissed off in another big game this week against the Dolphins on Sunday night football and their Kelly Green, Kelly Green throwbacks, which Beautiful, I'm really yeah. excited for. Um so just in terms of that, I think this team will use it as a you know way to bounce back. Devontae's everyone seems to have the right mentality. They they seem like you know upset that they you know didn't win and you know frustrated they could have played better obviously but no one seems to be like you know, there doesn't seem to be any locker room issues, anything like that. It is one loss. Schedule does get a lot tougher, but I just think this is going to be the wake up call that they needed. But let's let's talk about the Jets. I mean, this is a, this is such a good defense. Every single guy it feels like is a plus starter. Um, and the the depth really came to show this week with Bryce Hall, who kind of went from being your fourth dime corner to now a guy who kind of has to like be the number one in a sauce gardener type role and <laughs> didn't even do that badly like yeah. aj brown got the better of him a decent amount they didn't like leave him in that many island type situations but i think it's really encouraging just to see how well this defense is playing and zach wilson turning into like at least taylor heineke or whatever yeah. Yeah. um which is i guess fine um and I think this Jets team might make the playoffs. I, I really do. I just, the AFC looked a lot more loaded at the beginning of the season than it does now. And now yep. it's kind of like you're looking at probably one team in the AFC South, one yep. or maybe two teams in the AFC West, and then basically everyone in the AFC North is in it. But yeah, it, um, it, you know, it, it seems possible that a nine or 10 win team could make it and it seems like they could get to nine or ten wins like they probably have the best defense in the U in the nfl um and there are a lot of really good defenses so that's that's a big compliment and they're playing well um again not super worried about the eagles i don't know what, what are your thoughts yeah i mean i'll start with the eagles i mean i like you said like this is you know compared to last year i think this year they've obviously there's been more like obvious kind of issues and part of that's like their defense has been banged up their secondary has really been banged up um you know they didn't have Jalen Carter this week um the red zone offense has been pretty atrocious for them I think they rank in like at least before last week like in the 20s or something like that um so there's been you know and they played tight games like they played really tight against Washington really tight against uh New England right yeah New England I think there was another one that they played super tight with so like They've been in these close games all year. So when that happens and, and when you kind of got things you're working through, like, yeah, like you said, like they were not looking like a an unstoppable team. The fact that they were five and oh was probably like lucky to me. I mean, not I wouldn't say lucky, but um, you know, not really realistic of how they've been playing, I guess maybe is yeah. what you could say, which shows the to the amount of talent that they have on the team. Um, yeah, I'm not worried about them. They need to get healthy. Um, you know, first and foremost, like you can't expect to to like win every game when your team's like super banged up so um they signed julio jones i mean i think that's been a little hyped up at this one i think julio we've seen these last years is he's cooked he's probably gonna be hurt in like a few weeks like wouldn't expect if any contribution to get out of him i think is a plus so hopefully you know i would love to see julio jones you know you know find him find his his prime again but i don't think 34 year old 
Julio's going to quite be doing that. But, um, yeah, I mean, the only thing with Jalen that I think is a little concerning is just the turnovers. Um, you know, last year I think it was six interceptions he had, and this year he's already at seven. Um which, I mean, yeah, like you said, like that first interception the other day was like not his fault. Like not every interception is his fault, but um, that is a little concerning when you see a guy turning over the ball a lot more. Um, but I think this Eagles team will figure it out. Um, on the flip side with the Jets, I mean, like you said, like I think Aaron Rodgers coming back like after the bye. And at this point, <laughs> like that guy, I, I'm like, I've started to kind of get convinced that the NFL is actually scripted and this injury is just bogus at this point. Because it's like, it's it's almost like when the injury happens, you're like, oh, it's not scripted. They would never do that. And then it's like now you see him thrown on the field at like week six, like five weeks after surgery, like walking around without a, a boot and, and throwing the football. I mean, it's like this guy's crazy. I think he's just like God knows what he's taking, like pain med wise or, or whatever. But look, he's killing his rehab. And like, yeah, I'm partially joking when I say he's coming back. But it's like I was watching this doctor video and they're like, you know, week 15, 16 could be a legit possibility based on like where he's at with the, you know, where I would expect someone to be doing the same things he's doing. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I think if the jets are in it and he can kind of muster it up, like you may as well. Cause it's like, who knows when you'll get a shot to kind of go win a, win a super bowl again. Um, I don't know, but that's, that's besides the point. This defense, like you said, is really good. Um, they were without Sauce Gardner. They were without DJ DJ Reed, and they beat the Eagles. I mean, that is pretty incredible. Um, I think D line is incredible. I mean, Bryce Huff had a, a one and a half sacks, playing really well. Quinn Williams, obviously, with the interception. Um, Quincy Williams has been one of the guys on that defense that's been super underrated too. He's been one of the better backers, linebackers in the league so far. Um, you, there was one play where he made like a big tackle, and you see Robert Sala on the sideline doing his same celebration. I think that's awesome. I think Robert Sala is really a, a player's coach. And I think he wants, you can just see it. he wants to win <laughs> so badly. And I think, uh, you know, if you told me, I mean, now I'm kind of pivoting, but if you told me the Jets would be three and three with Rodgers after those first six games based on that schedule, I think most Jets fans would have been pretty like complacent with that. The fact that they did that with Zach Wilson is pretty crazy. And like you said, like, I think there's a path to the playoffs for this team. Uh, you know, they're on by, but then they come back with Giants, Chargers, Raiders as your next three games. Like Chargers, I think, are a solid team, but those are probably three winnable games for the Jets. I would expect I would favor them against the Giants and the Raiders, probably. Um, and then you've got later in the schedule, you got the Falcons, you got the Texans, you got the Commanders, the Pats, who suck, but they do own the Jets. So I feel like that's probably a Patriots win. Um, it's gonna come down to that too. Oh, week eighteen, Jets at New England for like a playoff spot. Oh my god, I can just picture the maybe that's Aaron Rodgers' comeback game, and he finally ends it. Oh my god, yeah. Well, we just uncovered the script, Dev. We just yeah. found the NFL we, script. We found it. Yeah. Wow, that was <laughs> week eighteen. They lost whatever sixteen in a row. Aaron Rodgers makes quickest comeback in in history, and they beat New England and go to the playoffs. Well, we. <laughs> We found the script. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, good win for the Jets. I mean, um, I mean, since they're on by, I guess we won't really talk about them this week anymore. But um, any other thoughts on this game or you want to jump to uh, predictions for the week? No, I'm ready to move on. All right. Sounds good. Uh, so we'll move on. Uh, tomorrow night's game, Jaguars at Saints. Uh, it's pretty bad. I think the Thursday night games the rest of the way are like awful. Um, next week is Bucks Bills. That's pretty good, actually. Uh, that's not terrible. But then Titans Steelers. It's just yeah, not good. Um, you know the Saints are coming off, I believe, a loss. Yep, to Houston, who yeah, they're playing good, good football. Um, yeah, the Saints offense looks terrible. The Jags. Uh, um, did they play again last? They played in. Did they no, play? No, no, they didn't no, play they in London. Back. They played. They were back in the states, and they beat the Colts. Uh, ETN had a solid game. Okay. Um, so Jags, Jags Saints, um, what are your thoughts? Obviously, kind of a, I mean, the Jags have somehow managed to get to four and two, so they've rebounded really well. Despite Trevor Lawrence, it feels like he hasn't even really hit his stride yet. Yeah. Um, I think Lawrence is like questionable. So, yeah, I think he's got a knee injury. Yeah. So that's one thing. Um, but as of right now, the Saints are like slight favorites. And if Lawrence plays and that stays, I mean, that's got to be one of the worst lines of the year. But besides that, 
Um, What's the line? It's Saints. Sorry, I missed that. I I saw that the Saints were favored by three earlier, and now I think it's it's more like two or something. Okay. But I'm assuming that'll change if if Lawrence is playing. You would imagine, yeah. You would so imagine. Get your bets in now. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'm not gonna tell anyone to do anything, but I don't hate <laughs> I don't hate that tomorrow night. Um or today or whatever you're watching this um but besides that i just think yeah the jacks haven't quite hit their stride but they're winning these tight or not not even really tight games they kind of blew the colts out and they they found a way to win against the bills uh as much as like they had the fumbling issues and all that stuff they found a way to win um so they're looking a lot better um and the saints is just they're such a boring team we know who so they are cool. Derek Carr I mean is really really bad in the red zone um like just loves to check down in situations where it's not necessary um the receiving core is cool but Carr doesn't use them enough um and the line isn't that good and their defense kind of does what it can so they're a very average middle of the road team so I guess this won't be an easy game, but I, I do see the Jags winning this pretty comfortably. Yeah. Um, the Saints are uh, – I'm going to go with the Saints. It's a weird game in the Superdome. Trevor Lawrence probably not 100% if he does play. Um, Saints defense is pretty good. You got to give them credit. Um, you know, it, it's a solid unit. Um, Kamara has been back. He's been playing pretty well. Um, it's just like you said, red zone efficiency. They just haven't been scoring touchdowns at the end of the day. And, um, you know, this Jags defense, they've, they've played solid, but it's not the best defense in the world. So um, I think this is, you know, now or, now or never for the Saints offense to get going a little bit. They just got to get Chris Olave the ball too, I think. I mean, Chris Olave, we've seen what he can do. Um, you know, he he's the number one on this team. You know, Michael Thomas is obviously still there, but, you know, he's cooked at this point. Not, maybe not cooked. He's a – Find like number two, number three on like a mediocre slash, you know, maybe fringe playoff team. Um, but yeah, Chris Olave is a stud. They got to get him the ball, like you said. Um, if I'm being honest, I, I Taysom Hill is such an interesting case because it's like I love Taysom Hill, but like I feel like at this point, it's just like, you know, they got to reinvent the wheel a little bit. And, you know, I think they got to mix things up a little bit in New Orleans. I mean, maybe that means more Taysom Hill, though. I don't know. Um, I- I kind of think it works. I, I it's guess weird. it works. It's weird, and like as a whole, their offense doesn't work. But I feel like he's pretty effective in a weird way. But I agree that it it's it's weird, and it's weird how much they use him. I mean, he had seven catches last week. Like it's pretty pretty crazy. I mean, look, I'm not I'm not trying to hate on Taysom Hill. I think he's a good player. I guess I'm trying to more. What I'm trying to say is, I just think this team needs to reinvent the offense a little bit and just kind of move to some new things. And that maybe means using Taysom Hill in a more different role in a receiving role. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm just rambling at this point. I'm going to go to Saints at home. Uh, the Jags, I don't know. I still haven't, they're playing good, but at the same time, I'm just like, I just am not, you know, look, they played the Gardner Minshew Colts. So uh, take that for how they beat the bills though. I mean, I can't hate on the Jags. I don't know. Just a gut feeling. I'm going to move on before I keep, rambling um falcons <laughs> going to the bucks the bucks um have come back to earth after uh you know the, a hot tuna start a little bit but uh i mean their defense is pretty good they've been holding teams to like 20 or so points roughly um they lost 20 to 6 to a very good lions team uh baker mayfield not his best game the falcons on the flip side um you know really you know good win last week against houston but they lose to the commanders um Desmond Ritter three picks I mean just when you think maybe Ritter's showing the signs he kind of lets you down again they've been letting him loose though 47 pass attempts um so yeah Falcons Bucks potential big NFC South matchup your thoughts on this one yeah um I think the Bucks are just one of these teams that plays the same game script every week um and it works reasonably well I mean they try to win the turnover battle. They try to limit their mistakes and maximize the other team's mistakes. They try to rely on their defense, rely on their playmakers. And to be honest, Baker has been like really good at 
not taking sacks and being careful with the ball, which isn't what we've seen from him. But if he's kind of figured that out, it's like he are, always had, obviously, the traits to be at least a solid quarterback because he was the number one overall pick. I mean, you don't have yeah. the number one overall pick without a really high amount of talent. And now he's kind of figuring out the more mental, <clears throat> intangible part of the game. So I think things are weirdly looking up for Baker. And like you said, with Ritter, just he's just not it. I mean, like, Straight he's up, yeah. in better, but he's just – you just look at that guy and you see a backup. I'm sorry. I, yeah. You know, it's no fault to him. He's, he's way better at football than I could ever imagine being. <laughs> but, like, I, you know, I and I only say that because I'm not trying to go after him or anything like that, but I just yeah. – I think he's what's holding this team back. And I, I'm going to take the Bucks in this game because I think these rosters are reasonably similar. I think maybe the Falcons have the edge at, with the playmakers and the line a little bit, but I take this Bucks defense. So kind of evens out outside of the quarterback, you feel like. And I just trust Baker more at this point, which sounds weird to say, but yeah, that's why I'm going with the Bucks. For yeah. you. It's funny you talk about Desmond Ritter. I, I was literally, um, it's just, I was talking to my boy who, uh, who played at Tulane, I guess it was two years ago. And uh, he was talking about, I was, I asked him the other day, I was like, Oh, like who like was like the best player you saw play. And he was like, I think Matt Corral did the best, but then he was talking about Desmond Ritter. He's like, yeah, we played the Cincinnati team with like sauce and all that. And I'm like, Oh, like Desmond Ritter was on the team. And he's like, yeah, like there was one play where like, cause it was a home game and he was on the sidelines. He was like, Desmond Ritter comes like sprinting at me, almost took me out. Like I didn't realize how like he's like, he was a big ass dude. I was like, I started laughing. Um, Funny random story, but um, shout out to Boy Jackson. But um, yeah, I'm gonna pick the uh, the Bucks as well. Um, you know, the Bucks are they're an interesting team. I think part of their problem offensively is they just have no run game whatsoever. Like Rashad White is uh, not very good. The O line is at this point outside of Tristan Wirfs not very good. Um, so they're really limited to just kind of passing the ball, which obviously I think you know Baker what he was so used to on the Browns was a run heavy offense and now he's kind of changed to a pass heavy offense which I don't think is the worst thing for him with those weapons um but I think it would just allow that offense to have a little more success if they could run the football a bit better um but regardless like this Falcons team isn't very good um they got to use Bijan more man like the fact that him and Algier are like spending carries I know Bijan didn't have his best game last game but you use like the number seven pick on him or whatever, eight pick, number eight pick on him for a reason. Um, yeah, whatever it was. Yeah. yeah, whatever, seven or eight. Um, maybe six. I don't think it was six. Was it six? Could have been six. I, I don't remember the numbers. That <laughs> Regardless, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, yeah, get get Bij on the ball more. I mean, I'm happy to see them finally. Drake London, nine catches for 125 yards last week. Like, finally, it's like they're getting the ball to him and, and Kyle Pitts a little bit more, um, which is good to see. But at the same time, you want to see B. John again, getting some love too, because he's a good player. But yeah, I'm going to go with the Bucks. Um, this defense has been pretty solid throughout the course of the year, and like you said, kind of earlier, like I just trust Baker a bit more than Ritter, and uh, you know, I think Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are are uh, better at this point than uh, you know the Falcons' weapons. So yeah, I'll go with the Bucks. So yeah, moving on to uh, this will be an interesting one: Raiders at Bears. Um, the Raiders won a, a close one against New England last weekend. Uh, so they're now three and three, surprisingly. They just, the Raiders, Jimmy G will just somehow, somehow find his way to 500, um, even on a bad team. But Bears it, pretty much confirmed, I think, that they'll be without Justin Fields, who suffered a dislocated thumb. Uh, so that's not good. They're starting, uh, I forget the kid's name, but he came in last week. Tyson threw a terrible, Yeah, threw a terrible pick to end it. Um, so, you know, this Bears team already sucks. Fields was really looking good. It sucks. I, I'm just such a Justin Fields guy, and have this happen now after he's playing so well sucks. Um, but yeah, what are your what are your thoughts on this one? Uh, I mean, I'll go. I'll say real quick. I'm going to pick the Raiders. Like, I just don't trust the, this kid who's playing for the Bears, and their Bears aren't good as it is. And without Justin Fields, I don't see any way they win this game. Yeah. Um. I'm yeah. I'm also going with the Raiders. This would probably be a toss up type game if Fields was yeah. playing. So it's just, and it doesn't look like Jimmy G is playing. Oh, he yeah. Actually. He, so he, he got re injured. He hurt his back. I don't know if that's what it was. Oh, before, right. That, yeah. Cause they were like worried it could be something super serious. 
Yeah. I totally um, forgot about that. So I guess this is a battle of two of the worst backup quarterbacks in the league. So that could be interesting. But is I'm it still Stidham? thinking the Raiders. Sorry to interrupt. Is it Stidham? No, Stidham's on the No, Broncos. it's Boyer. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's Brian awesome. Hoyer, yep. 38 He's, years of age, Brian Hoyer. Yep. That's just that's football. I yeah. Um <laughs> so there's I I don't have much like I'm not gonna be when this game gets shown on red zone, I'll be checking my phone or something like that. <laughs> so I think the the Raiders defense isn't that bad. Like Max Crosby is a freaking beast. Um yeah. He's kind of he's probably the defensive player. Eh, I don't know. There are a lot of I don't know, there have been a lot of great defenders this year, but He's in that conversation, and Patrick Graham, the uh, defensive coordinator, has done a really good job. He was with the Giants and did a good job, and then kind of struggled to implement his system last year. And now this year, it seems like he's he's doing it really well. So, you know, they're not a talented defense, but they're, like, mediocre. So that could yeah. really cause some problems for the Bears. Um, so I take I take the Raiders in this snooze fest, too. That I didn't. I totally forgot about the Jimmy J injury. I'll take the Raiders still, um, but I'm looking at Brian Hoyer's career. This guy's got such an interesting career. Came into the league when he was 24 with New England. He's only made 40 career starts in the like 14 years he's been in the league, and, and he's just like he's just churning it out. It's pretty. The life of backup quarterback is crazy, man. Like, Bro's been in the league for like 14 whole years on a team every year. Like that is nuts. Yeah. And he's still doing it at 38. They think he's the next Tom Brady. Um, <laughs> uh, moving along. Uh, Browns at Colts. Big win for the Browns. They knock off the 49ers. This defense played lights out. Uh, it's probably the best, maybe the best defense in the NFL. I mean, I think someone said, I saw something, I don't know if it was a graphic or what, but the addition of Jim Schwartz to the Browns was probably the most impactful offseason move player or coach made by any team. And I completely agree. I mean, the defense we had seen with Joe Woods with this team compared to this defense, it's like we'd oh, I feel like everyone was always just like, This Browns defense has all the talent in the world, like, but they suck. Like, what's going on? And now it's like, holy cow. I mean, they they did that go out and get some guys. They got Zadarius Smith, Dalvin Tomlinson, uh, Juan Thornhill this offseason, young cornerback rooms playing well. But um, yeah, Deshaun, it's unclear if he'll play this week. Anthony Richardson's out for the season, though. It's gonna be Gardner Minshew the rest of the the rest of the way um your thoughts on this one yeah I don't know it feels like the Browns like they just would lose this game after yeah. having a big win <laughs> yeah. um and this is another game where we don't know if, if the quarterback's playing because Watson didn't practice today so that doesn't matter it's on the whole league honestly. is just, yeah all the everyone's banged up <laughs> everyone's banged up right now yeah um outside of that though like the Browns defense is just so good. Um, like you said, um, the talent's always been there. It got even more talented, and now they have the right guy running, you know, leading the ship. And I mean, there's just not much you can say. They just they made Brock Purdy look awful. I mean, like that's that's hard to do when you know there were some injuries and stuff like that. But you know, they you just have to give credit to this Browns defense. Um, and offensively, I still like the, you know, they're going to probably be able to run the ball pretty well. The coach just lost their nose tackle Grover Stewart. He's a good underrated player. Um, I just, yeah, I think the Browns probably don't have to do too much on offense to win this game. Um, oh. But I still think they win it. Maybe some defensive scores, something like that. Um, yeah just feels like they're one of those defenses that just wins you the game unless, you know, your offense loses you the game sometimes. <laughs> sounds um, like the Jets. <laughs> sounds like the Jets. Uh, Yeah, like I said, there kind of are a lot of those teams, like, it, there's a scale of them in terms yeah. of how good they are, but, like, the Bucks are similar, the Titans are similar, the Steelers are similar, where they're all Cowboys kind of – Cowboys even a little bit. Cowboys in a sense, yeah. Um, So there are a lot of teams kind of trying to play that way, Um, but – yeah, I, I'm going. I'm going with um, Jesus. What are we even? What game? The Browns. The Browns. Yes. Yeah. Browns. Colts. The Browns. I completely forgot. I went on the tangent about the defense. And then he just, just lost it. Gone. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm gonna pick the Browns too. Um. 
you know, I, this Deshaun injury, it's just like, it seemed like that week against the Ravens he's going to play. And now it's like, oh, yeah, it's this whole thing. Like, you know, it's week after week. It's like, yeah, maybe next week he'll be good to go. And it's like, <laughs> when is this guy going to play again? Yeah. But, um, I mean, the fact that they won that game against the Niners is so huge. They're now three and two. Winning this game four and two, I mean, that would be so huge. Um, and I think they'll I think they'll get the job done. I think, like you said, the defense is just good enough that I think Gardner Minshew, you know, seeing how Brock Purdy and that loaded Niners offense did, given they lost some guys throughout the game. But still, you know, they really struggled. Um, I can't imagine Gardner Minshew is going to do amazing. I mean, the Colts, the only way they win this game is, you know, through the rushing attack with Jonathan Taylor and Zach Moss, which has been amazing this season. But you got to look at what the Browns have done this season. You know, they held Derek and Chenry, Derek and Chenry. Derek Henry seriously in check earlier in the season. Um, you know, I'm trying to think last week. I don't think CMC, you know, 11 carries for 43 yards. Like, it's not going to kill you at the end of the day. Um, so, you know, this is a tough matchup for the Colts, I think. I think, you know, P.J. Walker, he made some really bad throws that, you know, made you almost jump out of your seat being like, oh, my God, you're going to throw the game away. But, you know, he he's he's – He's a serviceable back, serviceable backup, I think we've learned over the, the years. You know, he can win you a game in the NFL. He's not, you know, once you start rolling him out four or five games, then it's like, okay, like, let's get him out. But, like, when he comes in for a game or two, it seems like he always kind of finds success. Um, so I think, you know, one more week with him and they can survive. And then hopefully after that, uh, you know, Baker's good to go. Or not Baker. Uh, Deshaun's good to go. Uh, but maybe he'll play this week. I don't know. It seems probably unlikely. But, um, yeah, I'm going to pick the Browns. I think just – this defense, man, it, it's fun to watch at the end of the day. And if this offense can figure it out, Amari Cooper too, man, shout out. That guy made some crazy catches. He is a, uh, he is a machine. Um, but yeah, moving along commanders at giants, the giants, man, with Tyrod, they, they somehow played the Bills super tight. Um, I mean, everyone was expecting a blowout and we actually got a, I mean, it was, wasn't a good game, but it was a, you know, a close, close game, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, that's probably the word I was looking for. You had Justin Pugh straight off the couch. Great intro. Um, they signed him to the active roster. So what do we think? Does the, the does the couch man lead the Giants to victory or uh, is Mr. Howell going to get the job done? I think I think the commanders will win. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't even really. I think the Giants defense looked encouraging. I think that you can yeah. take some positives away from. Um but they still probably shouldn't didn't really have any business being in that game. Um, Bobby Okereke, the linebacker, had a great performance. Um, he they signed him to a pretty big contract, so that's that's like a good sign. You're just trying to get as many positives as you can if you're the Giants because this season feels very over for them. <laughs> um, and in a weird way, like Tyrod's mobility and experience, kind of help mitigate some of the offensive line pro problems um yep. so maybe they're a little bit more competent now but they just still look like one of the worst teams in the week so i'm going i'm going with the commanders though um what say yeah. you what say you i love it i'm going the commanders too <laughs> um yeah the giants are they're in a bad spot i mean i feel like we talk about them every week so i don't need to go I don't need to rip into them too much this week since they actually did put together a decent performance. Um, obviously injuries have hurt this O-line a lot. Not that that would necessarily matter. Like just, I think my, my rant today will be directed towards uh, Joe Shane, the general manager. Like this guy's just failed the team at the end of the day. Like, the, like I just don't get how the wide receiver room is how it is and how that was like, how you can go in after a playoff season and, just not address that, which is obviously like such a need. Um, and they expected Isaiah Hodgins to just go in and kind of, you know, have that magic that he had at the end of last year. I don't know. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the Giants, with Shane, with that. They will even like, I know people are not calling for his head, but like there's talk of like, you know, what the hell happened? Like what's going on? Like they are they going to move on from him, which I don't think they will. I think GM would probably go first. I don't know, though. It's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, kind of how they approach the future. Uh, but yeah, they suck. Um, so the commanders should win this game um, pretty easily, I would say. But with Washington, what you think will happen never seems to happen. So it's probably going to be Danny Dimes. Maybe he gets, a, gets his revenge. I don't know. He always plays well against the commanders too. Yeah, that's um, true. So if he does play, maybe maybe we should be picking the Giants. I don't know. 
Um, this is a good game. Lions at Ravens. Uh, Lions five and one. I'm on our St. Brown huge week. Dave Montgomery did go down. Um, I think Jameer Gibbs is potentially coming back this week, though, which would be big for them. I don't know, though. It's kind of unclear at this point. Um, Ravens, uh, four and two, bounce back win against the Titans um, in London. Uh, interesting, interesting matchup. I don't know. I feel like this Ravens offense, um, I don't want to say it's been disappointing because they've gotten the job done, but at the same time, I feel like they had high expectations going into the year with some of these moves at receiver and kind of just feels like they're once again stuck with like one solid receiver and a bunch of kind of mediocreness. I don't know. Um, so yeah, what are your thoughts on this game? And, uh, I mean, both these teams. Yeah. I mean, these are, these are two really good teams. I'm excited for this game. Um, the Ravens offense isn't exactly what we were hoping for, but it's getting there. I, I still feel like Zay Flowers is going to be really, really good. Yeah. And, I just think him and Andrews with Fulmar is a really good foundation. Um, so I'm I'm cautiously optimistic that this offense is only getting better. And their defense has been really, really good. Um, yeah. And so is the Lions. I mean, the Lions, they don't have as much talent as most of the top defenses in the league. And they're probably not one of the top, top defenses in the league. But numbers-wise, they're just like, they're hard to run against. They're hard to throw against. They first force turnovers. They... They just have like solid NFL starters. It seems like at, at all three levels, and then Hutchinson's kind of the the main guy. Yeah, he's a star. Yeah, he's, he's a, beast. a star. He's a beast. Um, so I'm gonna go with the Ravens, but I'm really, I'm unsure in this one. I, I think it could go either way, and I think this is gonna be one of the better games of the week, though. I'm gonna go with the Lions. I'm gonna ride the wave. Um, yeah, Jared Goff is uh. Man, what a turn for that guy. Like, you look at what happened with the Stafford trade. The Rams just give up on him. You know, people are just like, oh, overlook him. You know, yeah, we'll get through a year of Jared Goff and select a quarterback and we'll be done. And now it's like, this guy is, uh, you know, the Lions are probably going to pay this. I mean, they're, I think, definitely going to pay Jared Goff, as they should. I mean, he's been great for them. Um, if he somehow hits free agency, I think a lot of teams would come calling. So, um, shout out to Jared Goff. Um his wife's a sports illustrated swimsuit model too. So that man's living a good life at the end of the day, but uh, back to football, uh, this Lions team, like you said, like just a gritty defense. I think that's maybe the right word to describe it. Like they just play hard. Um, like you said, like they don't really have like the superstar names that you maybe look to look at, like on a Ravens defense, um, which is really good. Like you said, like this Ravens defense is really good. This is going to be a, a really tight game, probably one possession. Um I don't know, man, the Lions just kind of have this feeling to them, and I'm just not sold on this. I mean, I'm not sold on this Ravens offense yet. I think Andrews is obviously, you know, a stud. I think Zay Flyers is a stud. Um, but outside of that, it's like the same thing we've seen. You know, J.K.'s down. Odell is cooked. You know, Rashad Bateman looks like he's almost taking a step back. Um, so I'm just worried. I don't know. I'm not sold on this Ravens offense. Mm -hmm. Lamar obviously is Lamar, and he's a star, and he finds ways to win, but – um yeah i'm gonna go with the the lions i think they'll get the job done all right moving along bills at patriots patriots now one in five i mean it is just it is is rough i mean this is probably one of the better games they've had all season uh against the raiders but uh buffalo coming into town not good for this new england team uh do you think new england could pull it off i'm assuming you're going bills <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go with the Bills here. Um, I think they're almost going to treat last week like a loss um, in the sense of they're going to come out pretty pissed that that was even a game. Um, and the Patriots, we talked about their defense is like something that could really hold everything together, but they've lost their two best defensive players. And even then, it probably wasn't quite as good as we expected or hoped or whatever, but so it's just their defense is, I guess, okay, but their offense is so cataclys cataclysmically bad that yeah. it just doesn't it doesn't matter. It's a big word. Uh, yeah, I word. know. I'm I'm pulling them out today. I'm like Stephen A. Um, <laughs> no, um, but yeah, I mean, the Patriots are just a really bad team, and I, I like I said, I expect the Bills to not want to have another repeat of last week, and they've played really well against the Patriots um recently, so. 
I'm going to go with the Bills here very easily, and I'm assuming you are too. Yeah, I'm not even going to get into it, to be honest. I think you talked about it pretty well. I think the Bills will will bounce back this week, and you know, New England's going to be looking for a new quarterback at the end of the season. I mean, I think that is uh, abundantly clear at this point. Uh, Cardinals at Seahawks next game. Uh, Seahawks three and two at this point. Uh, you know, bad, not bad, but really close game with Cincinnati that, you know, I'm sure Gino would love to have back through two picks. Um, Cincinnati, you know, up to three and three. So I think they're on bye this week. So, um, I mean, it, real quick, the Bengals, are you back in on them or not? Yeah, I was going to make a try. I was going to, I made a point in my head to try to talk about the Bengals. I think they're back. I still, I, I'm going to be honest. I think they're going to come out of the AFC. Um, wow. I, yeah, I think, the Chiefs, they just look really limited weapon-wise. The Bills are too hurt on defense. And I think the Bengals, I think they're, they're going to figure everything out. I think Burrow's healthy. This defense looked really good. Jamar Chase is a freaking beast. They've still got T. Higgins. Like, I, I'm i I'm back in on the Bengals train. Um, yeah, you? I mean, I'm not I, – I'm, I think they'll make the playoffs. I don't know if I'm back in on, like – I don't know. I'm still a little concerned. I feel like Joe Burrow, like, I don't know if he's fully back yet. Like, he only threw for 185 yards this week. Like, I feel like he's, as for that Arizona game, like, it still has not been Joe Burrow, per se. You know, he found a way to win this one. He found a way to win the Rams one. But he hasn't been himself in my eyes. Um, T. Higgins just switches number back to 85. I'll also add that. I mean, number five, I know, you know, that was the the college number, but it has not done you well so far, Mr. Higgins. So, I don't know. That's a random thought, but this and this AFC North is nuts. Man. Like it is four. I mean, the Steelers I think suck, but they're always there. So it's like four legit playoff teams. I mean, it is probably probably the most competitive division in football. So, um, yeah. But moving back, Cardinals, Seahawks, Cardinals. You know, they've they've found where I think everyone expected to them for them to be going into uh, the season. Outside of those first three games, they've basically been kind of blown out in their uh, their last three. Um, so, I mean, I'll start, I'll go with the Seahawks. I, I think, uh, you know, I just don't think the Cardinals are very good. They've gotten started to get banged up and it's kind of clear that, uh, you know, they're, I mean, they're pretty much tanking, but you know, they're, they're trying on the field at least, but yeah, this team is not very good. So I'll go Seattle. Yeah. Same. Um, it's a cool story. They're trying, they're playing hard. I think, I think they might be in a really good position and come this off season. I still kind of believe in Kyler to be honest, but um he's that's gonna, true he did he did yeah, practice he, or he's he going practice. to practice yeah yeah i don't i don't think he'll play this week but he will play at some point that'll be exciting i did pick him up in all my fantasy leagues so <laughs> i saw i think i saw that uh transaction uh, go by on yeah. my phone. um nice yeah nice stash um for <laughs> yeah some people in fantasy leagues if, out there um but yeah no the seahawks are winning this game um they just they're really good on offense the cardinals aren't going to be able to stop them and their defense might look pretty good um yeah the i mean the cardinals offense isn't horrible i guess and they like seem to be doing the right things but yeah, josh dobbs has been playing well yeah but even even the seahawks defense should have like a pretty easy time um yeah i yeah i'm going with the seahawks uh, next game, Steelers at Rams. This one's pretty interesting. Um, Steelers coming off the bye. Deontay Johnson might be back. Kyron Williams going to be out for the Rams. Uh, Cooper Cup's been back. He's been balling out. Um, this feels like I want to lean Rams, but then I'm like, it's just like, are the Steelers just going to pull this one out like they always do? I don't know. What are your thoughts? I, I'm really excited for this game. I love – I love the I like I like watching both these teams play because the Rams are just like a very finely tuned machine of doing everything they can on offense with like the limited offensive line they've got. And the Steelers are trying to do the thing where they're the worst offense in the league and still make the playoffs. So <laughs> that could be really interesting. Um, Yeah, so they're both kind of like weird fun teams to watch I'm gonna lean towards the Steelers just feels like they make like a defensive play or two and this Rams defense isn't gonna maybe be able to capitalize the same way that the Steelers defense is you know I don't think I don't think the Steelers will have like a great offensive day but I don't think it'll be a disaster necessarily so I'll lean Steelers but this could go this could go either way I'll go with the Rams um 
I mean, I don't know, man. It's <laughs> hearing you describe the Steelers as a fun team to watch is the it's is interesting way to put it. I don't know. I'm a sicko though. Defen- yeah. Def- yeah. <laughs> Defensively, I think they're super fun to watch. Offensively, it's it's an experience for sure. But um, yeah. I mean, I think getting Deontay hopefully back will be huge for them. I mean, it just kind of adds to. Uh, I mean, Deontay's kind of a <clears throat> you know he's always banged up, but he's pretty solid when he's in there. Um, but yeah, I'll go with the Rams. I think Cooper Cup has has just been so good. I don't think Pittsburgh's gonna be able to stop him. And Puka Nakua obviously has still been playing really well. Um, so I feel like they'll figure out a way to, you know, obviously Williams is, is not going to be playing, but they signed, you know, Daryl Henderson, Miles Gaskin. It's like all the journey then just are <laughs> just are like, all right, here we go. We're going to have you yeah. run the ball seven times each. And hopefully one of you breaks for one big run. Um, <laughs> they love Daryl Henderson there though. I mean, he's always, he's always getting the call mid season, like, uh, Daryl, <laughs> baby, we missed you, buddy. Come back. It's like this ex-girlfriend <laughs> you can't get rid of. Um, but yeah. yeah, I'll go with the Rams. I'll go with the Rams and and the boy Russ used to uh hasn't gotten a pick yet. I, I need maybe this week against Kenny. He's, this is I the week. It. Yeah, I need it, man. I need it like I need like this. The Rams need Daryl Henderson. Um, yeah, exactly. Chargers, big <laughs> AFC West matchup. Chargers at Chiefs. Um, I mean this Chiefs team. They're another team where it's like you look at the scripts, man. The Taylor Swift stuff, like they've been. Travis Kelsey, it's just like this guy's like a world superstar. <laughs> it's insane. Like he is uh I mean, I see Travis Kelsey more in the news than I think any other celebrity at this point. It's pretty crazy. Um, the Chargers obviously a bad loss against the, the Cowboys. And I don't know if real quick you want to talk about Justin Herbert a little bit. Like there's people kind of not like I don't know. I feel like Herbert just in the big moments in the big games, like he just has not gotten it done in his career. He's such a talent. He's an elite quarterback, but I don't know, Dev. Like, I've kind of been saying it, and I feel like I maybe said it once on the podcast this year. Like, I just haven't seen him win the big game. And once again, like, kind of had the chance and, uh, you know, didn't really play the best of football in this one. I don't know if you have any thoughts on it, but, you know, there's definitely, you know, I think at least for me, there's some sort of, there's a bit of concern with Justin Herbert in terms of can he win the big game? Yeah, it's like, it's not a, it's not like his arm strength or his accuracy yeah. or his ability to read defenses. Like all of that's really good. It's just like, like you said, like winning the big one, like that last drive, like Mahomes, like when on a third and 10, if Mahomes needs to go run and get a first down, like he's going to be able to do it. We saw that in the Super yeah. Bowl. We saw that in the playoffs last year. Like when teams double team Kelsey, they don't have Tyreek anymore. A lot of times the best answer for Mahomes is, all right, I'm going to do it myself. And, you know, I don't, it's not it's not all with the the legs necessarily, but it just feels like that, you know, instinct to just get a first down, you know, even Mahomes with like the penalties sometimes. He's really good at drawing the penalties with yeah. pass interferences. And some of that's just Mahomes. He's but, Mahomes, yeah. Yeah. But I, I yeah, you're right. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but it just feels like there's a little something missing. And there haven't been a ton of elite quarterbacks this year. Um so it's it's not like he's the only one that isn't having the year we expected, but I do think that of almost all the guys, I feel like you know Burrow. It feels like he's hurt. You know, Mahomes. I'm honestly not even going to discuss being worried about Mahomes because you know that's they're just, somehow five and one. Yeah, yeah, they're five and one. They're fine. Um, you know, Hurts hasn't had the year we expected, but I think he'll be fine. Like I think most of the other top guys will be fine, but with Herbert, I just. It just it feels like maybe it's the Chargers being cursed or I don't know exactly what it is. I that said, I did have in my head that I was going with the Chargers here. So <laughs> and then I sent you on a spiral. Yeah. So so going into go the going to your prediction then. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah, so I guess I just Herbert does seem to play well against the Chiefs, and the Chiefs don't really have the weapons to make the Chargers secondary pay, I don't think. And I don't know. I just, it's just the Chiefs are five and one and they're not playing their best football. So it feels like they're kind of due for a loss in a weird way. But I am, I am worried about Herbert. And I think, I think that is something to talk about. But I, I am going with the Chargers here. Okay. Uh, real quick, a, a fun headline that I just got on a Bleach Report. <laughs> Skipping practice is only the beginning of what James plans to do in Philly. Oh, boy. 
<laughs> oh boy. It's about to get good. Um, yeah. Sorry, I just thought I'd no, <laughs> share that. Um, yeah, Herbert is, a, it's an interesting case. Like, he's had a good season. Like, I don't want to try, I, I don't mean to bring that up to like say he's been bad this year or anything like he's statistically like he's played pretty well and um yeah but it's just just in his career I feel like we just haven't seen him like when is it like I mean the 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 biggest one I think was that Raiders game but they like lost <laughs> but yeah. you know coming back in OT or, or coming back in regulation like that was like the game I think you can point to where it's like all right Justin Herbert in the biggest moment of his life in the, of the team season like he can get the job done so yeah, they did lose that game, but I think they probably lost. The, no, they got the ball though, right? In OT, I think they got they, the ball at some point because it was like it was clock was expiring. Day. Yeah. Yeah. No, they definitely did get the ball. I don't, I couldn't tell you what happened in that overtime, but they did. Yeah, get the but ball. um, so we had a chance to win it. I guess I don't know. Regardless, um, we'll talk about this week. Um, I am gonna pick the Chiefs. Um, you bring up Justin Herbert always plays well against the Chargers. Feels like Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey always play better against the or I, I Herbert against the Chiefs and Mahomes and Kelsey against the Chargers. Um, I feel like I've seen it's not it's always the Monday night in LA where Travis Kelsey has like a thousand catches for five hundred yards and a gazillion touchdowns. So it's in Arrowhead. So I don't think we'll see like a. I hope that if that Chargers now I'm like curious. Sorry. Um, when the Chiefs and Chargers play in L.A., if I can find it. I don't know if I can. Um, regardless, I'm going to pick the Chiefs. I think um, I am worried about the offense. I like the McCole Hardman trade they made today. I don't know if they'll suit up, but um, just some familiarity for Mahomes and a guy who – that's just what they need more of at this point. It's like at this point they don't even have the guys that it's like they just sprint down the field and like Mahomes can chuck it deep to, which McCole I think is going to come in and, and give that back to Mahomes. like. Even the days, obviously, when they had Tyreek, it was great. But even the days of just, like, McColl, like, Byron Pringle, like, MVS, and uh, oh, there's some other guys I'm forgetting for sure. But, like, those kind of guys. And now it's like they don't even have those kind of guys, it feels like. But McColl is a good move. I'll just pick the Chiefs. The defense has been playing well. And at Arrowhead is never an easy place for anyone to win. So, um, yeah, I'll go with the Chiefs. Um, I want to find this this – Freaking! I'm wondering if it's just not on the schedule or if I'm just blind. Probably that I'm blind. No, it's week week 18, so I think it's on like a TBD the time. Um, sorry for going on that tangent, but uh, moving along. Packers at Broncos. Man, this is a boring game. Um, you know, maybe I, I would assume Aaron Jones is going to be good to go this week after the bye. Um, no, I know. Well, it's just been oh, okay. like three straight weeks of of. <laughs> He's going to play, and then he doesn't, so. Yeah, well, I saw – I think I was looking it up, actually, today, and I think there was an interview where he was like, oh, I feel the best I've felt all year, and it's like, he'll probably be out. But um, that's that's the life. Um, Jordan Love, after the hot start, it feels like, you know, it's kind of cooled down, but he's playing the Denver Broncos, who absolutely suck. So what are you thinking in this one, Doug? Yeah, I just, like, can't pick the Broncos, so I'm going <laughs> I don't think the Packers are very good. I don't think they played very well. I think Jordan Love had his toughest game. I'm not like ready to say anything like major on him just because it's been five games. Yeah. But he hasn't looked like a world beater so far. Um, but yeah, I'm going with the Packers. This is almost like a get right game for any offense in a way. Um just yeah, it, the running game will be open. The passing game will be open. It'll all at the floodgates. Yeah, the floodgates <laughs> will be open, and then yeah. So I I think I think the Packers win this pretty easily, actually. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Packers too. I mean, like you said, like this Broncos team sucks, and you gotta imagine some trades are coming. Like it seems like Judy's probably on his way out. It seems like um, you know, I mean, they already traded Randy Gregory. Um, you know, it seems like it's gonna be a fire sale potentially, and. This team's just headed in a new direction. I mean, they tried it one year with Russell. Again, it's just not working out. Um, I mean, even the – I don't want to get into them too much, but, like, I, even the Sean Payton trade, I still look at them just like, I don't I don't know. Maybe it'll pan out. Maybe, you know, obviously this roster right now is not very good, but I'm not going to get into that. Like you said, the Packers, I mean, Jordan Love, ferocious game, ferocious, her- horrific what was I even trying to say? I don't even I don't know. know. <laughs> Fer- ferocious and horrific, I combined, yeah. I guess. I don't know. Ferocious. That's a fun <laughs> one. Um, three interceptions last game, so it was h- horrific. Uh, but I think I'll bounce back, like you said. Um, and hopefully Aaron Jones is healthy. I think Aaron Jones is, like, 
he's just the key for this offense. Like he's your best offensive player. You just got to get him the ball. He's a good pass catcher out of the backfield. Like I know they love doing their 50, 50 bullshit with AJ Dillon, but it's like, just get Aaron Jones the ball, man. Like you look at how he played week one. He had like 11 touches for like 160 yards or whatever it was like, just get Aaron Jones the ball. I think it'll make the offense a lot better, but they probably won't listen. Uh, but I'll still pick the Packers in this one. Oh, this is a fun one, Dev. Your Philadelphia Eagles at home, uh, Miami Dolphins. Could there be Sunday? Actually, I think that would be. Would that be a? Could, now I'm like all, off the. Uh, no, there would not be. I was thinking there could be a Phil's home game that night too, which would be oh. nuts. But it would be the night after if there was Game Six. Um, <clears throat> but so that means if somehow it gets back to Game Six. The Eagles game will be the warm up. Eagles, Dolphins. This is going to be a fun one. Um, I don't know really. I mean, you know better than me. What do you think the status is of some of these defensive players? Obviously, I mean, Slay was out last week, right? Yeah. Is he going to play this week? Because obviously, with those receivers, uh, you know, b- being banged up in the secondary is not the, the thing you want at all. <laughs> yeah, my sense is that Slay and Carter will play. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I think. I think they will play. I think that was it was kind not precautionary, but their sense was it was only a one week injury, and I don't think okay. anything this week has suggested it won't be. But like you said, it's going to be important to have Slay out there and playing well. Um, yeah, yeah. So, what are your thoughts, Eagles? Uh, obviously, coming off the loss, Dolphins. Um, you know, their offense is moving. It's going to be. This is going to be. This is a great. Stuff. This is probably one of the better games of uh, potentially of the season. Yeah, no, I'm really excited for this one. I think it's going to be a close game. Um, I just – I think this is going to be the best game of the the Eagles' offense this year. I just I just feel like this is going to be the game where everything starts to click and this Dolphins defense isn't super talented without Ramsey back. I think he's – that's a big difference for this defense. If slash when he comes back, it's looking like when will be very soon. Um, so that's good news for the Dolphins. But I am going to pick the Eagles. I, I do think – I just think it's going to be a great game for the offense. And I think this defense can make a play. Maybe Tua, like we've talked about, you know, he's prone to making, a, you know, one or two bad reads a game. And, you know, hope, obviously we've seen a lot of that from Hertz, but hopefully, you know, Hertz can get back to that ball security he had last year. Um, so I'm going to go with the Eagles. What about you? I'm going to go with the Dolphins. It might be a bit bold to say that Tua is going to go win this one in Philadelphia, but. I don't know. I this offense. I mean, Tyree Kill is, you know, putting up historic numbers. Waddles, you know, still there. Raheem Mostert's running the ball incredibly well. The defense has been relatively solid. So, look, this team is going to go as far as Tua goes. At the end of the day, the talent is there the rest of the way. Jalen Ramsey will be back at some point on the defensive side of the ball. Like this Dolphins team should be really good, and it's just going to come down to Tua and can he get the job done he has for most games this year? Um, you know. Obviously, Slay is coming back, but is he going to be 100%? Probably not. I mean, you know, I mean, most of these guys in the NFL, I don't think are 100% most weeks. But, um, you know, coming off the injury, you, you want to be as fresh as possible for a matchup with Tyree Kill or even Jalen Waddle. So I'm going to go with the Dolphins. I think their their receivers find a way to get it done. Um, I think it'll be pretty high scoring. I think that, like you said, I think the Eagles offense will come out and play pretty well. Um, but I don't know, man, kind of a – I got the gut feeling that the Dolphins pull it up, but I don't know. It's it's a tough one in Philly too. Like even as I'm saying this, I'm kind of like, what am I doing? But I picked against the birds last week and and somehow made it. So I'm not trying to curse your team here, but um, <laughs> yeah, um, I'll go with the Dolphins. Why not? All right, 49ers at Vikings Monday night football. Um, that was a terrible. Uh, impersonation. I forget his name, but the the Spanish announcer. Um, yeah. he's a he's the best. I love I those interviews. Yeah. Um, Niners coming off the loss to the Browns. Obviously, um, you know they're a little banged up now. I think Debo left the game with injury. CMC, Trent Williams, maybe two. Um, so it's a little early to tell kind of the status of those guys. Regardless, though, does it even matter? I mean, this Vikings team is. Uh, I mean, they got the win against the Bears, but. No Jettis. This defense is pretty bad. It feels like Purdy and whoever's out there can probably find a way to get it done. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, there's not too much to be said here, to be honest. Like, <laughs> like you just aren't super exciting without Jefferson. And 
I wish Kirk waived his no trade clause, to be honest. Um, yeah, me too. Uh, but yeah, I think the Niners will win almost. I mean, obviously, it'll be better the more of their guys they have. And I think I, I think most of them will play. Um, Didn't seem like any of them were major injuries. But yeah, I, I, I just think the Niners are too good. And the, the Vikings just don't have the path without Jefferson. Yeah, I'll go with the Niners, too. Like you said, like it seems like those guys, I mean, I don't know. Devo's been injured and not injured for it feels like the whole year. So maybe they give him a one-week breather. I don't know. Um, CMC probably will go unless he really can't. Um, but at the same time, I mean, they're five and one, so at some point, it's like, why risk injury? But you obviously don't want to, you know, those are three pretty big guys where if you're without them, like this offense will suffer, but they can probably survive against the Vikings. This Vikings team has not been great, and uh, you know, with a healthy defense, I think, like you said, Kirk is probably probably going to struggle a little bit. So, yeah, I'll go with the uh, the 49ers. Um, you know, this is still a really good football team, even with the loss. Obviously, I mean, they that loss is on – you don't want to say it's on the kicker because you, you should – as an offense, they played terrible. But at the end of the day, like, the kicker missed two kicks that if he made, they would have won. So, um, and I would have won my fantasy game too in one league. So, thank you, Jake Moody, you amazing human being. Um, <laughs> uni, University of Michigan graduate, which I love so much as well. But, um, yeah, um, yeah, the, the Niners will win this one. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that will do it for the NFL. Real quick, uh, we're going to talk some college football real quick. Um, I'm excited for college hoops to start up, too. I mean, that's we're approaching a few weeks now from uh, from those games getting underway. But obviously last week, um, really two, two huge games, uh, and that was Oregon-Washington and USC-Notre Dame. Washington pulls it through. They're now ranked number five in the country. Michael Penix Jr., probably the Heisman favorite at this point. Um, I mean, they've got receivers for days, it feels like. Bo Nix, you know, did his best. He played pretty well. Um, I mean, this Oregon team is still really good. But Washington Huskies, do you think this team is a, you know, serious contender for a national championship or, you know, and just another Pac-12 team that will ultimately kind of fall short? I I think this is a real contender. I do. I think. You almost get some 2019 LSU vibes, um, not even in the same atmosphere in terms of the NFL yeah. talent, but just a very dominant offense um, with an older, more experienced college quarterback. And, you know, he just he's he just does a great job of playing point guard for this offense. And I don't mean that as an insult. I mean, he just puts the guys in the best position to succeed he's very accurate very smart with the ball like has a lot of you know Tua type traits to him as a lefty you know I'm sure he's going to get that comparison a lot when he's coming out but yeah. um yeah I mean I I do believe in this Washington team um it's hard to with the history of the Pac-12 in this era like you said but I um I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna buy the you know the stock here of Washington yeah I'm gonna buy it too I mean it's tough. Like, I think it's going to be super interesting. I mean, they're going to be in the Big Ten with Oregon next year. So both these teams are going to be competing at the, the highest level. I mean, the Big Ten I, the Big Ten is going to be both. I mean, the SEC is already crazy. But the Big Ten, like, you look at the, the number one poll right now, like, that's I think 50% of the teams are going to be in the Big Ten next year between Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, Washington, Oregon. Yep. And then you've got USC, <laughs> UCLA, who are good teams, too. I mean, it's 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 freaking nuts at the end of the day. Um. Yeah, Penix Jr., man. I mean, it's crazy this kid came from, like, Indiana. <laughs> I mean, yeah. what they had there. But but for him, um, you know, he's been balling. It's going to be really interesting to see where he ends up with the draft, obviously. But um, right now, the Heisman favorite and for a reason. And, I mean, this team's got really good receivers, kind of like I said, in, in the open. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think they could, you know, at the end of the day, like you said, like the LSU team, like they obviously had a pretty good defense, obviously a lot of first-round talent. But at the end of the day, offense – can really take you far, um, but it can't take you everywhere. And I think, you know, Ohio State almost taught us that last year, even though they probably should have won that Georgia game. Um, at some point, you know, your defense has to step up and make a stop. And, you know, not that the Washington defense – Washington defense can't. Um, to be honest, I don't really know much about the Washington defense, so I'm not going to make a casual comment here. But, yeah, I'm buying into the Washington – I think it's a fun team, too. I think it's always good to see new teams enter the mix, too. I mean, we're so used to seeing – obviously, Clemson's kind of faded out now, but – these last few years, it feels like it's always Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State. Um, you know, Michigan's dabbled in there these last few years. 
um, kind of the same few teams. So it's exciting to see like a team like Washington, who usually is in like the top 25, but finally kind of get that spot in the top five. Um, so I think college football, honestly, this year is at a much better spot than it's been in at, in, you know, past years. I think you could say. Yeah. All right, real quick, USC game against Notre Dame. Notre Dame blows them up 48 to 20. Um, you know, this essentially shatters USC's playoff hopes. I would, you know, I feel like I confidently yeah, say, probably. I guess if they win, yeah. let's see their schedule. I mean, if they play, they play Oregon, Washington, Utah, and UCL. I hate the rest of the way. Oh, my God. Four of the next yeah, five the games are ranked. Wild. Pac-12 is wild. And the fact that it's, like, breaking up is awful. It's low-key awful. Yeah. I, yeah. It's a good – man, it is what it is. But, yeah, I mean, this team's looked not mediocre, but they've the, – the defense has not looked good. They've given up 40-plus points in three consecutive games now. Um, three interceptions for Caleb Williams. Obviously, I think this guy could throw 10 more interceptions and probably still be the first overall pick. But um, I don't know if you got a chance to check out this game, but your thoughts on them and, and kind of, you know, Caleb Williams. I mean, you, I don't know. I doubt this is true, but there is something I saw where it's like, he wants NFL ownership and stake in whatever team drafts him. I was like, that is – Caleb, you will be undrafted because the one thing these rich owners do not want to give up is money. And money. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's pretty funny. But, yeah, your thoughts on uh, I mean, this game and, and just Caleb Williams in general. Yeah, I mean, Notre Dame's a good team, Um, good defense, probably the toughest one he's seen all year. But, like, that's not – that's not what you want to see. Um, <laughs> like three interceptions, two of them were pretty bad, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, yeah, like you said, he could probably have thrown like six interceptions and he'd still be the first pick. But it's just not not great to see that. Um, like we saw with Stroud, a big thing is how you do when the things get tough, not how you do when things are easy. Yep. And I think – you know, that's something to watch with Caleb Williams is like he's got four ranked matchups in his next five weeks. So let's let's see what he can do. Um, yeah, 100 percent. Yeah, sorry. Were you going to say no, 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 I'm done. Yeah, I mean, 100 percent. I like I like that you bring up Stroud. I mean, yeah, like it's something that I think I wonder. I mean, it's tough to really scout someone just like what happens when it, the tough gets going. But like Jay Stroud, like. Like, look at how he's done in the NFL and like. There was, you know, he, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm losing words here. Um, But yeah, I mean, like you said, in that Georgia game, like he went through a lot and he, he figured out a way to get his team where they needed to be to win the game. And ultimately they didn't, but that's besides the point. But uh, shout out CJ Stroud, who I, I guess, yeah, they're on by the Texans. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. Caleb Williams, he's obviously a superb talent. I think it's almost good to see him go through a little adversity and see how he responds. Um, Cause just like, like you said, like everything's easy. It's just like, you can't learn because in the NFL, things aren't easy, even for guys like Mahomes and, and these superstars. Like they lose games, they get injured, they have receivers go down, like they've got to figure things out. So for Caleb Williams to have a game like that, I think it's good to, you know, also, I don't want to say pump the brakes, but at the same time, a little bit too, because it's like when someone gets this tag of like generational, you know, if he was in the same draft as Burrow or Lawrence, he's going number one, like the pressure is on and I think at this point it's good to kind of see that he's human almost and just be able to you know enjoy him for what he is and and stop talking about you know I think it's almost good that that game happened in a way for him but I think it'll be the schedule's crazy so I mean if they go out and win all five the rest of their games they got a playoff shot but it's probably unlikely considering how good like Washington and and Oregon are I mean they're probably the third best team frankly in the in the Pac-12 right now yeah all right. Well, I think that will do it for this week's episode of Outside the Arena. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Obviously, next week, World Series preview. Uh, NFL is going on as always. NBA, we're inching closer. And James Harden's about to cause some chaos. So we're going to probably have stuff to talk about. As always, if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Check us out on Apple Podcasts and Spotify at Outside the Arena there. Uh, all our social medias will be in the description. And yeah, we'll see you on next week's episode of Outside the Arena.